Hey guys, it's Ivy, and I'm here today with a speed paint for my October 2020 Patreon print. This is a pretty long video, so I'm probably not going to be able to narrate like all of it, but uh, I'll talk a little bit about some of the parts that I, you know, what I did here and there. So uh, my first step here was doing some thumbnails, and I do these pretty small. Um, as you can see, <laughs> I try and make them really simple. It's more just about getting a very rough idea for composition. So I did a few of these. I was kind of having a hard time coming up with an idea for this print actually. So I used a really weird reference that my friend Richard sent me. Uh, you'll see, I'll put it up somewhere. <laughs> just, uh, he actually did it like kind of inspire me. Like I did end up using it, but it's such a weird pull. So. That's kind of what gave me the idea for the lantern and everything. I was like, oh, I'll like, make her... She's kind of like stealing the moon in my mind, though I was like, well, that's kind of evil. Maybe she's putting the moon up. I don't know. <laughs> Could be either way, I guess. But in the end, I think she's kind of like putting it up there because I put this trail. But either way, so I have my like thumbnail and now I'm just kind of doing a basic like anatomy sketch underneath it. And from there, I move into like a detailed based one on top of that. This is all just really loose, but it's just, this is again, kind of like my line art phase in a way. Like a lot of this stuff is going to get drawn over, but this is where I start to divine, de define, I divine it from God. No, I don't. I define it. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I just kind of have fun doing a little sketchy stuff, keep it reasonably clean, but not like worrying about it too much. Okay, it's me again, because we're about to get into the thumbnail part right here. So I size it way down so I can try and figure out where my colors are. And this is something that Marco Bucci talked about doing in his staging video, and I find it so helpful. This is actually how I kind of do my base colors now a lot of the time. Super small. Um, and then it just kind of tells me like if it's reading correctly as a thumbnail, which is really important to me. I want to make sure that you can kind of tell what's going on from really far away. So that's why it's so small. It's seriously like maybe like 200 pixels wide max. It's really small. <laughs> but by doing it this way, I have a really good eye of like where... I want things and how it looks from far away and if you can tell like what's going on at a really you know distant way and then when I size it back up it you know it, it all reads really well it kind of keeps me not thinking too much about the details of a picture but more the overall thing so then I keep my little thumbnail in the corner so I kind of have a reference and at first I start doing this like shadow pass thing, thinking I might kind of do what I did for all of my sticker designs. You can kind of see that process in another video I posted. Um, but halfway through, I'm like, why am I doing this? I'll just use the thumbnail. So I size the thumbnail up and I literally just use that as my base coloring. So that's kind of how it all started. I'm just now... I start breaking it down into layers where I define just the shape blocks of certain areas. So these aren't like worrying about colors or anything. I know that I'm going to take that um that like thumbnail basically to to color these sections, but I just want to make sure that they are like a clean silhouette. So that'll make a little bit more sense later. I don't record this entire part because it's literally just me like outlining these things. Like you don't need me, <laughs> you don't need to see all of it. So there'll be a cut in here, yeah. But um, 
that's what I do. I just go and make a layer for each one. Oh yeah, there's another thing I should talk about here. <laughs> this 3D model I popped in here is from, um, I think it's like Sketchfab or something like that. It's, it's some uh, website that lets you load up models and view them from pretty much any angle. And I mean, I wouldn't tell anybody to like go and steal 3D models for their pictures or anything, but in this case, I know I'm gonna like draw over a bunch of it and it's not going to be recognizable. So it's a lot easier for me to just like not worry about making that perfect geometric shape. It just seems like a big use of my time when I could just slap something in there. So I think it's fine as long as you don't like, you know, steal people's designs and stuff. I think it's not a big deal. I don't know. Maybe that's controversial, but I, I'm controversial <laughs> in that case. <laughs> so you probably saw, like I said, I brought up the thumbnail. So now all of those, um, like even though the whole picture looks blurry pretty much, they're all in these individual silhouette layers that I created. So now I can kind of lock those layers and paint inside of them without worrying that the shape is gonna get too muddied. And that makes the picture look pretty sharp. It actually kind of gives a 3D effect to it all because there's like shading inside of the kind of harsher shape, which is sort of what 3D looks like a lot when it's rendered. So I'm just painting away, having a good old time. <laughs> So because everything looks so blurry right now, I add a like red drop shadow to some of these layers at some points in time because I can't tell where the silhouette actually is. So just showing that red drop shadow every once in a while like tells me, oh, okay, that's where I decided the edge was. That's why I did that. Right around here is where I stop using those like alpha locked layers to color in this stuff. I mean, I'm doing the final touches here, but then I just start painting over all of it on a new top layer pretty much. So keep in mind that I'm not usually working on like singly blocked in layers. I'm usually working on the whole piece like right on top on just like a new layer because I'm chaotic like that.
I actually find it pretty amusing how many parts of this picture I had like a really hard time figuring out what the heck I wanted to do, like what was happening. There were so many areas I needed to pull up refs or like take a picture or something. Both of the hands I had to take reference pictures for because I just could not figure it out. And this bird, oh my god. <laughs> like I, my sister, right, paints birds for like a living and she's great. Oh my god, this made me respect her so much. <laughs> I mean, not that I didn't respect her before, but like I tried to draw this freaking crow so many times. I could not figure out, like I had references up and they just all looked like butt to me. So, I mean, eventually I got it. I think he looks fine, but like I had to really mess with that one. Like I, I like it's so weird when you're looking at a reference and you're like, "What?" Like I'm looking at the it, it looks like the reference. I can't even tell what the heck is wrong. It just looks stupid in the picture. Why does it look so stupid? <laughs> so I think that's one of the weirdest things about like drawing subject matter that you don't usually do. Like, I mean, for the most part, I do people. So things outside of people, I have a hard time with a lot of the time. So animals and stuff, it's like, I'm looking directly at the picture and I'm like, why are you wrong? I don't know. But whatever. We, we got it. We, we got it. Okay. For this part too, um, you probably, I probably mentioned this in the description or something. So you probably already know this, but so I, I'm sharing this brush that I made, but, um, you know, it's good to know, by the way, that you can, like, always make your own brushes for this kind of stuff. Like, I pulled up this reference picture. I really liked this design. I think adding those kinds of elements can be super helpful in just, like, making things look more refined and detailed and not just, like, boring. <laughs> so, yeah, I just slapped this brush on there. I make these kinds of brushes, like, kind of frequently and just use, like, a little liquify and warp to make it look, like, not too uniform. Yeah, I think it worked out pretty good. So yeah, I'll be sharing that. And I th I, ha I think I have some other brushes. Maybe I'll share those too. Why not? We'll see.
Man, this hand. I mean, I don't think it looks horrible. Actually, as I'm rewatching the speed paint, I'm a little bit confused as to why I like changed it so much. But yeah, this was another one where I was getting frustrated. I ended up just taking a picture of my hand in like the pose I wanted because it just like, I, I don't know. I couldn't figure out what was bothering me about it. But it's weird now, like looking back, I don't really mind either hand. I don't think the hand I ended up with is like significantly better either. It just kind of looks fine. But whatever, whatever. I'm I'm fine with it. <laughs> it's just weird that I was getting like so angry. I was like, oh my god, I gotta take a picture. Like go to all that effort. It's like it looked fine, dude. Chill. Now that I've pretty much painted over everything that I wanted to in the girl, I mean, there's a few little things I'm still finishing up, but I gotta work on the background. One thing I'll say about my work is that I very frequently redefine where my silhouettes are. I don't worry about it. That's one of the things that makes it really hard for me to do line art because this kind of thing is constantly changing for me. Like, because I moved her whole hand, for example, I have to completely redo where the outline of her is and this is just a process that I do like multiple times in a picture that when I first started doing painting like was super just like bizarre to me because I feel like when you're a little bit newer to this or or maybe this is just a me thing I don't know but like you're a little bit more inclined to be like this is the foreground this is the background whereas now I'm way more comfortable just like repainting over and over that exact thing like just redefining it all the time not worrying about the cleanliness it does kind of make it hard to like do some things like my layers aren't the cleanest because of this but it does make it so much easier for me to just like mess with stuff and not worry about what the shapes are like so I don't know it works out for me pretty well <laughs> We're getting really close here and I just want to say like I'm sorry that I didn't record the f like very final bits and pieces. This this recording part was what I thought the final print was going to be but like this always happens to me right where I'll print up the like what I think is going to be the final and I'm like eh, it's just okay <laughs> and I always end up doing more like without fail. So I'm sorry, you haven't really missed a whole lot. It's more like me finishing up things in Photoshop and messing with like filters more than like me actually doing any painting. But still, like, I feel like I should capture that more sometime. Sorry <laughs> that I don't have it. Uh, that's, yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> all right, I know this is kind of a less polished video, but I don't know. This this is what I got, I guess. I mean, <laughs> whatever. I really hope you enjoy it. Hope you like the print. Hope you learned something. All right. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you next time.